I've come to love this verse, <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. So we're underlying the word here, gospel, which means Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the good news. And again, we're asserting that Jesus can meet every basic need of your life and my life. So we're talking about, and I've talked about the last two weeks, Jesus can meet our need for change. We've also said there's nothing we resist more often than change. So let's, let's continue this and kind of put this all together today. And so we're looking at uh, John chapter 5. Sometime later came one of the Jewish feast days, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. There is in Jerusalem near the sheep pens a pool surrounded by five arches, which has the he Hebrew name of Bethesda. Under these arches, a great many sick people were in the habit of lying. Some of them were blind, some lame, some had withered limbs. They used to wait there for the moving of the water. For at certain times, an angel used to come down into the pool to stir the water, and then the first person who stepped into the water after the disturbance would be healed of whatever he was suffering from. One particular man had been there, he was a cripple, for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there on his back, knowing that he had been like that for a long time, he said, do you want to get well? So let's go on. He, and finally, the man says, verse 7, sir, replied the sick man, I haven't got anybody to put me into the pool. And when the water is all stirred up, while I'm trying to get there, somebody else gets down in, in the water first. Then Jesus responds as we look at the healing. Verse number 8, Jesus says, get up said Jesus. Pick up your bed and walk. Gosh, just think about that. Two words, get up. And then he says, pick up your bed and walk. Jesus, when he speaks, things happen. The power of God works in and through him because he is God in a body. Now, let's see uh, what the result was. Verse 9, at once, immediately, the man recovered picked up his bed, and began to walk. Whew. Now this happened, look at this now as far as the result, and look at the pushback that came as far as the result. So the man's healed, he gets up, he's walking. This happened, verse 10, on the Sabbath day, which made the Jews keep on telling the man who had been healed, it's the Sabbath, it's not right for you to carry your bed. Man, these people were off. The, the man who made me well, he replied, was the one who told me, pick up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, and who is the man who told you to do that? But the one who had been healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus has slipped away in the dense crowd. Listen, anytime you follow Christ, there's going to be pushback. Anytime you get serious about following Jesus, there's going to be pushback. Not only from people that don't believe in Jesus, often even from people who say they believe in Jesus. There was pushback, but there was more than that. Let's look at the deeper healing in this passage. Verse number 14. Later Jesus found him, the man who was crippled, who's now healed, found him in the temple and said to him, Look, you are a fit man now. Do not sin again or something worse might happen to you. So let's talk about this for a minute as we close this up. The man's plan was to get into the water and come out walking. Jesus' plan was to change his life. A lot of times we think the obvious thing that we want Jesus to do is the key thing, but often Jesus wants to go to the deeper thing. He wanted to heal the man's life from the inside out. Imagine, 38 years, no change, no understanding of faith, no understanding of Jesus, and he runs into Jesus. You see, Jesus was the focus here. Jesus took this man on, gave him the instructions, healed the man. So therefore, the focus is Jesus. Watch this now. One of the results of sin is often suffering. But not all suffering is a result of personal sin. Please keep that. In fact, I think I need to repeat that. One of the results of sin is suffering.
but not all suffering is a result of personal sin. Jesus told the man to focus on the root issue. The root issue is sin. Jesus wanted to heal him spiritually. The greatest miracle, I believe, in this passage was forgiveness. The deeper issue was his sin and the forgiveness of that sin. What could be worse? Someone asked me one time, what could be worse than being lame for 38 years? I think it would be being a cripple for eternity, to be eternally separated from God. So what's the conclusion here? Number one, only Jesus can bring a deeper change in your life and my life. Number two, if you want him to change you, he will. Number three, any change he makes is for his glory and for my good. Oh, we've got a great Jesus. We've got a great Jesus, God in a body, who wants to work in and through your life, even this very day. So why don't you go to him now and say, Lord, here's some areas in my life, or maybe just an area uh, that I, I wish you would change. Please change me and watch him go to work. You think about that.